if you watched the unboxing video, you know that we received this model to do an unboxing video on. And of course, for that, I've actually got to build it. So this video is just the process of me building this model. It's a, a DM13-1 Technic engine model. So let's get on with the build. Okay, so here we are, lid off the box. At first sight, actually, it is lovely. I mean, I feel I may be waxing a bit lyrically about this, but it's predominantly made of um, aluminium, anodized aluminium, and steel, uh, stainless steel, apparently. So if we take off that first layer, little plastic separator, that'll be useful. Now look at the second layer, we've got a, another layer of bits and pieces, a little kind of cool. And she has a really cute little chain, isn't it? That is really nice. Another layer. Okay, so we've got a crankshaft here. That actually is really quite pretty. So there's no cast marks or machining marks on it. it has a beautiful finish on it, actually. That's very nice. This is obviously a piston. And if you look down there, you can see they've bothered to put little inserts, stainless steel inserts, into an anodized cast aluminium body. Again, the quality of finish on it actually is really quite nice. And that has been beautifully finished. Huh. And then obviously, it's very much my habit when making models actually, particularly when there's a whole series of things to make that's the part of the model, is to locate the parts, lay them out in the bit that I want to do. So you can see the piston here has got the parts laid out. So we've got the crankshaft, the piston, the gudgeon pin, and then the two circlips meant to locate the gudgeon pin. And the instructions tell you to put a little bit of oil on. I want you to put the oil in here. I figure that would be a little difficult, actually. So all I'm doing is oiling the rod. And then obviously push the rod through. And then add the circlips. These circlips are just a push fit, and you don't need anything special to do it. So it doesn't, they're not that strong, so you don't need a circlips pliers to put them on or anything just a little bit of effort with your fingernail gets them over there so same procedure I've looked at the next stage I've laid out the bits that I need so we're now supposed to attach the pistons to the crankshaft I found the crankshaft laid out the bits and what we do is just attach that to there using the bottom of the big end and the screws provided with a couple of spring washers and you meant to put a little bit of oil in there before you actually connect it up so I'm going to do that So there's the pistons and crank and it's ready to go in the case. You need to make sure you've got the orientation right. So this large end here goes towards the maker's mark on the engine on the engine block there. And they just drop in there after being pre-oiled. I've pre-oiled them, obviously. Drop into the case, very nice. And then these parts here, again, just following the instruction manual, get put there. and use the allen key that's provided with the allen nuts and screw those in. And that's it together. Now it has a nice solid feel to it actually, quite a comfortable weight. Um, the little screwdriver worked surprisingly well and if we give that a flick, it's got a nice action actually, that turns pretty smoothly. Now I've finished the uh, engine block, it's a cylinder head and these little sort of dummy spark plugs screw in there. So having finished that we're going to put this together as I say. I've put in the little spark plug bits and the next bit is to make 16 of these valves. These valves are made up of the four parts that I've laid out here and I've laid them all out again the same way so that I know everything is there. Uh, and you just put them together like this. So that one slots in that and that bit goes there spring goes there and then the valve cap goes on the top there give it a little bit of a press and screw it down now this so far everything actually has been really easy to do it all fitting very nicely the screws are lined up the engineering is very good actually then you can feel in the heft of it that there's a weight of material there very often these kind of things are made out of slightly cheap materials, they're misaligned, they can be a little bit of a pain. 
and something like this, a tiny misalignment is going to make the thing really difficult to put together. It's so far, I found that everything is going together really smoothly, actually. And there is a real quality feel to it. You can feel it in the machining of the parts and the weight of the actual device itself. So I'm going to put the other 14 of these in. So I've installed the valves and checked that they're all the same height and that they move freely and you can see them moving nicely and freely there. And then it's time to put the uh, crankcase cover on. There's a little arrow there to tell you which way around it goes and it's a kind of a snap fit. It snaps in rather nicely and then fix it down with the 10 screws. So a little tip, if you try to put it on straight, you will get it on, but it snaps in place. If you put it on a slight angle, either way, it doesn't really matter, a slight angle, first bend, one, and then the other, it fits rather nicely. Not forgetting the direction or to oil the bits as shown in the manual, just drop on the camshafts. And then we put these brackets on to hold those camshafts in place and bolt them down. So with them on you just check that they're free spinning and then look down on it there so you've got a left and a right. On the left and the right on the first section here the cam needs to have the bottom of the cam pointing outward on both sides so that points out that points out and then with these two parts they are marked up L and R so then you put them on the left and the right with the bosses facing outward and screw those down with the provided bolts. So to put on these exhaust plates, one plate goes on that side without anything. This plate has these little exhaust bits slotted through there. But before you slot them through, there's a little rubber O-ring that goes on first. So on those eight sections, you put on the O-ring and then slot it through. Like that. So that's the cylinder head construction finished and now we move back to the body. So find the base and bolt the legs onto the base. Having done that, turn the base over and attach the engine block. It'll only attach one way, there are five bolts that way, four bolts the other way. So there was an awkward moment here where I tried to put that bolt in underneath that and it wouldn't actually go easily. Actually it went in easily but tightening it I thought was going to be a nightmare but they provide this little cut off allen key that's a perfect fit for that. I actually thought that was a smart touch. So that piece gets bolted on there, that piece gets bolted on there and it's time to put that on. So we can put the cylinder head on and then fit the crankshaft like that. And that's that section finished. So if we spin that flywheel, see the pistons going up and down there. So these are what they're calling the starter motor. It's obviously a geared DC motor and it fits together, says he. There we go, like this. So that goes onto that. Then the body goes on and then this end plate gets attached. So this gear and cover plate goes on and then the whole thing gets attached there on the engine body and engages with the flywheel. So they have this generator assembly which is clearly another DC motor. Now I've looked a little bit on, I can't actually work out at the moment so I'm going to fit it all together and maybe take it apart later but it strikes me that soldering on a couple of wires here and here and putting some sleeve on them would be a good idea at this stage. But I'll assemble it according to the instructions and we'll see what happens. So once that's assembled, put the pulley on and it attaches to the engine body just there. So there's these parts of the pump assembly and it slots together like this. And then we bolt that down. So once we put that together, the pulley goes on and the whole thing fits right on there. So these are the tensioning belt assembly parts and they go together like this, I'm just slotting and screwing them together. Pulley goes on that, put a washer and then a nut goes through. So I fitted that together and put in the tensioning screw and then that fits on right there. I actually found it a little difficult to attach that with the tensioning pulley still in place, so I removed the pulley. It was this one that was giving a problem, 
removed the pulley, attached it, and now I can put the pulley back on. Now that's actually in place. So this chain guide goes on here, and this sprocket then goes on there. So for gear alignment, there is a mark in the case there, a circle, and there's a mark right there on that cog that we just put on. And you have to turn that in order to get those two marks to line up. Now that's a bit difficult actually with this connected, so I found the easiest thing to do was to remove that cog turn it so that you had the lines are marked and then replace the cog and the cover plate after you'd done that. And to install the chain, just line up those two marks again, slip it around, pop that around there. And feed it on. The chain tensioner is here, which obviously fits there and there, and it has a little adjustment arm for changing the tension in the chain. So there's an adjustment point there where you can change the chain, the chain tension. Having done that, we can attach the main drive pulley. And put on these pulley belts. So this is getting towards being complete, we just attach the dummy air filter onto it. And then this guide plate goes on here. That gets bolted down and that's pretty much the engine complete and ready to do the battery and battery box. So for me the battery box actually came pre-assembled and it fits right there on the generator side of the engine. The control box actually took a little bit of jiggery pokery to get everything connected and turned around, but it does all fit, even though it's just a little bit tight. You have to remember to get the cables through there, and then we can put the backing plate on, and it's ready to mount right there. So that was the build. Putting it together actually it wasn't that difficult at all. There were no misalignments, no bad screw holes, nothing that was loose or sloppy. It all went together really rather nicely. A couple of little quirks, like I say, that thing about the uh, pulley wheel where we couldn't actually get it on unless we removed the idler wheel. So this one here, which is the tensioner, that was a little quirk. Um, it's a tight fit to get the electronics in the box, but the electronics went in. There's no problem at all, really. It was a little tight, but it went in well enough without crunching anything up. It was just the wires needed a little bit of folding over to get them in place. And... Uh, Really, it's, it's made quite a beautiful model, and I certainly enjoyed building it. I mean, it took me quite a few hours to build, actually. So I certainly enjoyed building it, uh, and I'm very pleased with the result, and it is one of those things that's going to go onto the table. Uh, if you want to watch the unboxing video, obviously it's a different video, but let's turn that on for a second. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> When something moves, it comes to life. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.